Howdy, neighbors. How are you doing? So, uh, let's put it straight. I did this tutorial earlier, but it didn't render, and my computer shut down. So, I was in a bit of a fuck my life moment, as you could probably understand. But this tutorial is really good and is really useful. So, let's get started. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really nice 3D text, which looks really effective and really lifelike can really liven up intros or backgrounds or whatever you want to make. So basically go to file, new and you'll face be your surface like this and you want to go to your shapes and go to sphere make the sphere quite small like so and then double clicking the materials down at the bottom on colour pick a red or well pick whatever colour you like really it's completely up to you but I like red and white always looks quite good together and then on reflection add a uh, fresnel and then double click on this little gradient here and drag the diamond shape all the way down to the bottom so it's a lot darker then you want to go on specular and you want to make sure this is also turned down like so okay so now that's done just drag it onto your ball like so and just render it to see what it looks like so far. Obviously there's no lighting or anything, so uh, there's not much to see. When that's done, you want to just copy and paste this ball as many times as you can, without it looking a bit too over the top. And vary the sizes as well to add quite a nice effect, like so. Also, uh, I like to view the object from above, so I can add um, so I can make sure that they're not overlapping the different objects I really don't like it when that happens it really annoys me especially when you render it and then it just looks terrible so as you can see I'm just duplicating this as much as I possibly can varying all the sizes like that and I think I'll do this a couple more times just around here maybe once more over here and I think that'll probably do for the uh, balls and as you can see already they're getting this kind of shine on them which looks really quite nice now on your render settings make sure your anti-aliasing is on best and when you come to render it'll always look a lot better with no edges no like torn edges or whatever so when that's done go back down to your materials and choose a white or whatever colour you'd like for your opposite and again use the fresnel and turn up all the speculars to make the white as white as it possibly can be now once that's done just add the white to a couple of the balls like that and then render it just to see what it looks like and already that looks quite nice with the different colour balls. I'm going to copy and paste this a few times again. Like so. So once you're happy with your balls, then add a background. Now I did this by adding a cube, dragging it behind all the balls like so, and just making it a lot bigger. already this looks a lot more realistic even with this grey background but what I chose is I went down to the materials and I went to my colour and I want to change your degree to about 19 and then you want to just drag it up to this kind of light peach press OK and drag it onto your cube now I quite like this light peach I think it looks quite effective I think it looks really good like that and then what I tended to do was go onto the arrows which were all pointed out and I went to light now lighting makes all the difference in my opinion without it I don't know what you do but what I tend to do is turn the intensity down to about 80% then 
then I went to shadows and I changed it to shadow maps soft and brought down the density down to about 50% <coughs> and as you can see it looks really effective now with the lights and with the shadows I think that generally looks really really good so once you're happy with that I also added a second light on this side but I did bring down the intensity a lot more and then I did the same with the shadows like I did last time but I brought down the shadows down to about 20% and there you go you've got these nice balls that look really effective and of course these look good in intros or outros or backgrounds or whatever because it just looks more realistic than some of the other stuff you see on other people's pages so once you're happy with your balls, let's get started on the text. So go down to your like S with a little plus on the end and go down to text and drag the text in front of the balls. And I just typed in That always happens every single time I do it. And I just typed in balls. So, and then I went to font and I chose red board it's really quite a nice font the download link is in the description feel free to download it red board and bring down the height to about 112 or whatever kind of size you're using whatever size kind of doesn't take over the balls too much and once that's done, go down to your NURBS settings and go on Extrude NURBS and just drag your text until the little down arrow comes down. And there you go, you've got your 3D text. Drag it out slightly because it's going into the balls in the background. Once on Extrude NURBS, change your movement to 40 on the last... Um, on the last... Uh, I don't even know what to call it. On the last one. <laughs> change it to 40 so it's like that and then what you want to do is you want to copy this and paste it and on the bottom extrude NURBS text change your object movement down to 20 so half it once you've halved it use your blue arrow to accurately drag it into the middle of the text. And once you've done that, go back to extrude NURBS and go on caps and click on fill it cap. Now once you've fill it capped your text, change the radius down to about three. Okay that looks quite good and as you can see because you dragged it into the middle you've got your front text in front and the fillet cap text at the back so you get this nice effect like so now what I tended to do was just use exactly the same materials for both and I dragged the red onto the back and the white onto the front and you get this really nice effect with the text and that looks really good and that's basically it for this tutorial how to set up a nice scene in Cinema 3D with accurate and realistic lighting and shadows. Feel free to comment in the section below if you want any other tutorials on Cinema 4D. I am not a pro, I've only had Cinema 4D for about a week. But, you know, experimenting and stuff like that, it's quite easy to get a hang of. But yeah, um, comment also in the section below if you'd like this as a wallpaper. I already have it saved on my computer. I've also uploaded the, um, the save as file to Filefront so if you want to download that and put it into your Cinema 4D and play around with it yourself please do but remember to credit me whenever you use it. Thank you for watching I'll be making some more Cinema 4D tutorials remember to stay, 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 blah, 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 blah. stay subscribed follow me on Twitter the links in the description and like this video.